Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about West Lake Soul by Rio Yours. Or as I've come to know him, Zoolander. Look at that face, man. He's doing the Blue Magnum or whatever the hell it's called. Blue, Blue Frost. What is that movie? What is that name? Whatever. I think it's Blue Magnum. Uh, what's his name? Ben Stiller? Zoolander? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah. I read... Uh, for, first off, thank you so much to Wayne Fenlon who uh, sent me this book. He's a good friend of mine. Really, really good dude. Um, sent it all the way from across the pond. Thank you again. I'm super glad you did. This book is amazing. At first, I didn't know what to think about it. Um, I started reading names like Dr. Thinker and, uh, or Mr. Think, Dr. Thinker, Dr. Quietus. Um, and this dude was a superhero, but he was stuck in his own head. And I was reading uh, what seemed like at first some, some pretty silly stuff. Uh, like, with him battling, you know, this, obviously, it's his, like, depression or looming death or whatever metaphor it is. And then I realized that the book was far deeper than I was giving it credit for. So I slowed down and I took my time and I, I loved every page of it. Um, there is a scene in here with uh, the this... The Westlake Soul, the main character, um, is a full quadriplegic. He has uh, little to no brain function. Um, he 100% relies on the care of his mother and father and whatever aid is working with him at the time. I don't want to give too much away about the story, but there's a scene where um, the new his new caretaker is feeding him and it is oddly erotic. Uh, I, I don't really know how to explain it. I've never read anything like it. And that's one of the things that I kept on coming cr across through page after page with this book is I, I'd never read anything like it. Um, I am impressed by some of the metaphors and the allegory that he used in the book. Um, I especially like the way it ended. Um, I especially, I kind of saw it coming, but I especially appreciated that. Um, a lesser author would have taken a, I guess, a happier route, I guess it would have been. Um, but some of the, some of the stuff that happens in the story really, really hit home with me. Um, as, especially because there was a point in my life when my wife had to take care of me completely. Um, I wasn't able to walk, I wasn't able to go to the bathroom by myself, any of that stuff. I was a pretty young dude, and Shell, if you guys watch the Is It Nasties, um, you have, you've met her, basically. Um, she took care of me, 100%, and, you know, she stuck out through all that. She stayed with me, um, and it, it's funny because that seemed to have brought us even closer together, um, then you would think something like that might pull you apart, you know, having to wipe your man's ass kind of deal. And I know that's TMI, but, um, it seems like, you know, we're, we're closer now. Uh, <laughs> not even trying to be joking, but, you know, of course we're close now. No. Um, it seemed to strengthen our relationship, and, uh, we, we both appreciate each other a little bit more. I know I appreciate her. Um, but there was a lot of stuff in here that really, it, it, it caught me in my feelings. Um, so, that, that's one thing, I might be a little biased, but from what I, from what I've read from, from other reviews and other people, pretty much everybody thinks this book is fantastic. Um, the main thing I want to express it here is, you're not going to come across another story like this, period. Um, the back of the book doesn't do it justice. This is not a story about a superhero. Um, I went in here with, with the wrong expectations right off the bat, which was expecting some kind of superhero story about maybe he uses the dog as like his, um, he, like a puppet kind of thing where he, he turns a dog into a superhero. Or, I don't know what exactly I was thinking, but I was expecting a straightforward superhero story um, with him against a villain kind of deal, and that's nothing. That's n do not expect that at all if you go to read this book. 
Um, what you are going to get, you're going to get a very touching story that relies very heavily on emotion and sympathy and empathy to progress the story farther. Um, now there is, what, what's his name, Wayne the Fucktard. Um, there, there is a, a villain of sorts um, other than the Dr. Quietus character. Uh, which was very well used, but uh, Wayne the Fucktard kind of gives you somebody to, to focus in on. That's what he's called in the book, is Wayne the Fucktard. Um, and, you, of course, you feel bad for um, the, his new caretaker. Um, I can't remember her name, and I've been bouncing around, and I can't remember if it's Yvette, Yolanda, Esmeralda, something like that. Um, she's Quebecos, I remember that much. I'm just really, really terrible with names. I know that Fat Annie, his original caretaker, ends up quitting. But the thing that I, I, I really wasn't expecting was the twist halfway through the book, where you finally get the plot of the narrative. You get the point of the story. And that hit me hard. Also, I'm like, well, damn. I can't imagine being in... The parents' situation, I can't imagine being in Westlake's situation, I can't imagine any of that stuff, and I was, I was apt, I was held, my attention was peaked, and I was there, showing up every day, trying to read, and, uh, 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 oddly enough, trying to read as little as possible to make the book last as long as I could. Um, so this is an easy five-star read, and I want to thank Wayne my friend, I want to thank you so much again for sending me the book, because I likely never would have read it otherwise. Um, from what I understand, it's no longer in publication, so it's not. it might be floating around there in the second-hand market, of course. But I don't think it's out anymore. I don't think you can get it at all. Um, if I'm wrong about that, let me know down in the doobly-doo. Especially, let me know if you guys have read it and what you think of it. I'd especially like to hear from someone who didn't like it. Um, and I'd like to know why, not just, hey, you suck. No, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear why you didn't like it. i especially like to see that point of view, because I can't imagine anybody disliking this book. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Yeah, so the name is Yvette. Um, also, I'm going to be going into spoilers here at the end, if you don't know how we do. Here at the end, after the outro, I talk about spoilers for those of you guys out there who like to hear about the spoilers before you've read the book, or if you've already read the book and you want to discuss things, you want to hear my thoughts on certain aspects. Um, the scene where she's feeding him, and it's almost like a sex scene, uh, while she's feeding him through the feeding tube, I've never read anything like that before, never seen anything like it. It was fantastic. Um, I also like the... It really hit me hard when I realized, I came to the re realization, when Westlake came to the re realization, that they were just going to let him die, that they were going to pull the plug, basically, um, and stop feeding him and just let him starve to death. It's like, holy shit, I can't imagine. Um, and like I said in, the, in the, the review at the beginning of the video, I can't imagine uh, having to go through that, having to make that decision. Um, you're, you're not in, you're not in someone's else, you're not in someone's head, you don't know what they're going through. How can any of us ever make that decision? Uh, you know, there's, there's that idea, um, it's, it's kind of like thinking about, uh, you know, uh, the death penalty. None of us, unless there's actual video evidence, um, that someone did it, you never know, you know, it was there good reason, even, even if there is video evidence, was there a good reason for someone to have killed somebody? That kind of thing. Um, you know, even beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's always a little bit of shadow of doubt because you don't know what's going on in that person's head. That kind of thing. It just, it really, it really bothered me on, on a deep level thinking about, um, holy shit, you know, how many, how many families did I talk to when I was, uh, working in a hospital setting going, you know, it, that, would you want to live like this kind of thing? I mean, would, would you want to die? You know, that's a, that's a hell of a question. Um, and it's also a hell of a burden to put on someone, especially uh, especially parents. You know, do you let your child live in that situation? Or, you know, do you let them pass on or whatever? Um, it's, it's very, and you know, when religion comes into it, you know, do, do you especially want them to pass on because, you know, you expect them to go to heaven? What if they don't share the same beliefs kind of thing? You know, there's so, so many questions were asked. Um, once I realized that this wasn't your typical superhero story, I, I, my, my enjoyment of the story went through the roof. Um, in fact, 
call, calling it, you know, a superhero story on the back, I think limits the idea of the story. And it could possibly upset some people that show up expecting a superhero story. It'd be like, you know, expecting a horror story and then you end up getting like a romance or something. That's almost how severe this is. Um, but there are really cool scenes of action and suspense and whatnot. It's just, it's not real. It's all happening in this dude's head. Um, but yeah, I think Yvette was a, was a terrific character. Um, so was Westlake. Everybody was well thought was well fleshed out, except for maybe the sister Nikki. I, I didn't get a real good feel for her. But mom and dad, uh, dad's confession, you know, about him cheating and whatnot early on, and how he felt that he was being punished for that. So many great emotional scenes in this book. I, I, I was shocked. I was shocked that I hadn't heard more about it. I know who Rio Rio Ewers is. Yowers, whatever the hell his name is. Um, I've, I've seen his name all over the place. The Forgotten Girl, you know, all, all that stuff. I've seen his name all over the place. If you're on Twitter as an author or a reader, he, he's bound to have popped up at some point in time. But I had no idea this book existed. So, again, Wayne, thank you so much for sending it, man. I really can't thank you enough. Um, and I will be forever indebted to you for you having sent this because this is now probably one of my favorite books of all time.